I suppose we're talking about renewable energy and it's the buzzword at the minute <coughs> and we have been involved in Willow since about 2006. We've approximately 3,000 acres of Willow in our round that we would have planted and were still involved in an awful lot of cutting and selling to Bordenamone. Um, biomass, I suppose what is biomass? Anything that'll burn is biomass. Grass, straw, miscanthus, all that type of stuff, right? Uh, <coughs> I suppose six years ago when we were starting up, we were getting a lot of information from the Swedes and from the Danes and they were telling us all about willow. It didn't need anything to grow. It just grew and grew and you couldn't stop it. And uh, a lot of this was total bull. It does need something to grow. It needs plenty of slurry or sludge. It is a great way of getting rid of sludge. Unfortunately, legislation is not allowing us spread sludge on willow because willow is classified as an industrial crop. We need to change something. We need to change probably that willow is an industrial crop to an agricultural crop. It seems very silly, you know, we're never really going to be eating willow. But at the same time, the sludge is being spread on all the big grain fields of the country. So there is traces of sludge being found in the bread that's coming back in from the wheat. Um, the government let us down in a lot of ways. They didn't give us much support. They paid, there was a grant for planting willow at the start. That has gone. They were to fund machinery for cutting it, for processing it, for all this. Nothing was forthcoming. Uh, we spent an awful lot of money promoting willow and moving it all ahead, you know, to get it to a better place. At the minute, there's only one outlet for Willow, and that's Bordenamona. Bordenamona are buying it very cheap. What they need to do is pay an extra 10 euro a ton. An extra 10 euro a ton would turn farmers inside out. It'd be a great return for them. If the use of sludge was permitted, the farmers would probably get another five or a ton for the use of sludge which to be putting out about 20 tonne to the acre, which would be another 100 euros a year on top of their crop. But from all my experience in the whole thing, biomass, the last thing we should do with biomass is burn it. And that's what's been done right at the minute. And <coughs> I don't know if you agree with this or not. There's so much valuables in all of the the wood chip the straw that we're missing out on it's like the sticks in the fire if i explain it like this if you put a stick in the fire right it burns away and you see the flame and you have a lot of ashes left what's in the ashes is no good whereas if we can take it out before it becomes ash we can do something with it and what I'm saying is, there's a great market opening up for a thing called bioethanol. Bioethanol is a type of replacement for petrol. Um, it's been added to the petrol at the minute. 7% bioethanol is in all the petrol. That is going to increase over the next few years to 10% to 15 and up to 20%. Now... <coughs> A few years ago, we were looking at a plant in Kells. We'd be taking in about 120 tonnes of wood chip. We'd be burning it and producing 15 megawatts of electricity. But my thinking has changed on the whole thing now with all this new information. The right thing to do is have the 15 megawatt plant producing the electricity. The 120,000 tonne of wood chip that would be coming in would come in a different gate into the other plant where we make the bioethanol. There is a process where we add in the wood chip, we separate the C5 and C6 sugars from the wood chip, and that goes on to make the bioethanol. Now we do have a waste 
from this process and it's called lignin. I don't know if anyone is familiar with lignin, but if you want to know what lignin does, if you look at an open fire when you throw the stick in, the flame that you see is caused by the lignin. The lignin that's left after producing the bioethanol is like a candle wax or a soap. It's liquidy and it sets. It'll be setting and we intend putting it into a type of a sausage machine and we're going to make things called pucks. They're, uh, you know the puck in the ice hockey. It's a disc. So we're going to chop them up and have them in pucks. That will be sold off to board in the morning then or whoever wants it. And it's so flammable, it's like the box of fire lighters that you can buy in the supermarket. Once you put a match to them, they're away. It takes nothing to light them. So that's what I say, we're able to get two uses now out of the one feedstock, which would enable us to pay more for the willow in the first place. Now, we're not only held to willow, we can use grass. We can do the very same thing with grass, and we can do the very same thing with straw. At the moment, we're in the process of doing a deal with a company for 300,000 tonne of straw. We intend to produce 50,000 tonne of bioethanol a year. And we hope that that is going to be in Ireland, depending on planning permissions. Unfortunately, other countries are offering us such deals to move with this technology. We just don't know where we are at the minute. There's nobody offering anything here. If you're doing anything in Ireland, you're very much on your own. And we have found that out at a huge cost. Um, I suppose after that then, when we get into the bioethanol uh, stages, Bioethanol is used by all the pharmaceutical companies in Ireland. They use them for washing out the pipes and for all that type of stuff. Uh, we have met a lot of the biorefinery people in Cork and a few in Galway and some down in Wexford. Everyone wants this stuff, the bioethanol. It seems to be very valuable and it can't be got. It's coming from Brazil at the minute. And the cost of bringing it from Brazil is serious. So there's a huge market there. Uh, and just, I suppose, to reiterate what Duncan has said about 40% of our produce going to Britain, this, we hope, will solve part of the problem. Where farmers won't need cattle to get rid of their grass, they'll be able to just cut it and send it in to this factory that will process it and produce bioethanol and hopefully cause a scarcity so as the cattle prices will rise and the milk prices will rise. Uh, I haven't very much to say about anything else, I don't think. If we get into the bioethanol, then we're into biochemicals, we're into butane, we're into an awful lot of stuff, you know, like this stuff can be refined you know, it's well fit to run aircrafts on it. So we could be becoming a producer of fuel more than agricultural products. Look, it's just something, in my view, that's what's going to happen. Uh, and there's an awful lot of people out there with money at the minute who want to invest in this type of technology. We, I suppose, got in at the beginning and we got a license for Ireland and the UK and for other, any other country that we can get into. We have seven different countries talking to us at the minute. So there's huge interest in it. If it works, it'll work very well. If it doesn't work, I'm in a lot of trouble. <laughs> but look, that's the way it's going. Uh, the straw, there's a huge amount of straw that there's no use for at the minute because the mushroom people have all changed to this kind of a gel substance that they're able to grow the mushrooms from. So there's a huge amount of straw out there at the minute. So I think, you know, why not use what we have? You know, there's another project we're involved in as well, and that's insulation. 
and I'm big into using what we have plenty of. As a fellow says to me one time, he says, um, and I think what way he put what I have, I have plenty of. It's what I haven't got, I'm short of. <laughs> you know, so it left you none the wiser. <laughs> but, um, what's that else I was to say? No, look, that's all I'm saying. You know, I think there's a huge market there for willow, for grass, and for straw. Oh, yeah, I was talking about the, the insulation. We're going to make the insulation out of grass. It's a natural insulation. There is no cost for the end of life for getting rid of it, which is common down the track. It's very hard to get rid of, I suppose, the rock walls and the fiberglass and all that at the minute. We are making the insulation at the minute. We're fireproofing it. You can have it any thickness you want. Mainly doing it for the seal, you know, the roofs between the boards. You can have it that um, if you're insulating that, you ring us, you tell us the distance between the boards, we'll send it out to you on a pallet. You don't need a suit to put it down. You won't be itching and scratching. If you want to cut it, you use the bread knife. And it's so simple to use. We'll put it on a pallet, we'll land it at your door, and you go out and you bring it in. It's cut. They're in lengths of about six foot long, and it, it'll bend and twist, and, you know, it's very pliable. But it comes as if it's in boards nearly, you know. But it's very good, and it's a fabulous product. But look, that's some of the stuff we're into. And um, I don't think I have any more to say to you.